reported uh, probably in the media, that's for sure. Um, the media will let you believe that it was the, that we need to regulate meme stocks, we need to regulate retail traders. Uh, but in fact, there's, a, there's a, another side of the story which points in a different direction. I think we've all been suspicious when we've seen high volume coal buying followed by the stock rising within a week or so, maybe days sometimes, could be even a month, but we, we associate the, the rise in the stock with the excessive coal buying and sort of a conclusion that is, is very suspicious. The excessive coal volume leads to uh, the underlying stock increasing. That is true in part, but there are other things going on. When one party is long the call, they have an asset, there's a counterparty that is short the call and they have a liability. The market makers typically marry people that are doing covered calls with traders that are going long a call. So you have one side going long a call, the market maker looks for someone selling a call and marries the two positions and makes a market. If you have high buying call buying, which is not illegal, the market maker takes the position himself. And as I'm reading the media, you never hear much about market makers doing this. I mean, they pointed to Citadel, but they don't really explain what goes on. The, the, the excessive coal buying forces Citadel or any other market maker to take the other side of the position. So now you have the retail traders in game stock long the call, and you have Citadel or some other market maker short the call. The market maker has an option to do nothing or hedge. Typically, market makers don't like to take overnight positions. And most of these calls were for at least one day or more. So they will hedge that position. And the hedge of being short a call is to buy the underlying stock. That is what moves the stock. So in, in as much as we can marry long call buyers with covered call sellers, nothing happens to the underlying stock other than information flow about the stock causing the stock to go up for fundamental reasons or technical reasons, momentum, moving day average, whatever. But insofar as the volume on the long side exceeds the natural offsetting volume on the short side, the selling side, the market maker steps in must hedge their position and that creates the balloon up. Now, I watch CNBC, I watch Bloomberg, I read all this stuff and I don't, has anybody heard that explanation? Great, but uh, I'm very disappointed and it's, it's not uncommon that even the regulators are just starting to, I think they understand this, I mean the ones in senior positions, but they don't, they don't know how to, how to handle it. Now, there are other things, and I'll give it back to you, because, but there are other things that need to be discussed uh, in the situation, because the, the market maker, in an effort to support now the short seller, uh, Melvin Capital, they will typically borrow the stock, as I think everybody here knows that, they borrow the stock, give it to the short seller, they actually sell it, it never goes to the short seller. Everything stays on the books of the market maker. They sell the stock, they put the cash on their books, memo credit to Melvin Capital, and that's collateral against the short. And that's the typical short selling, but that's not what happened with gain stock. It did in the beginning, but when the shorting got out of hand on the hedge fund side of the fence, the market makers, created synthetic shorts. And that's a whole other issue, and we can talk about that, but the synthetic shorting and naked shorting, which is illegal, you can, a market maker can do, can execute naked shorts insofar as they're facilitating a trade. They're not to facilitate someone shorting a position for an extended period of time. So, 
the regulators are looking at that now as to whether or not there was this naked shorting by the market makers on behalf of the hedge funds in order to facilitate the shorts. And I think they're going to uncover that there were some issues there, which gets me to a final point. I'll give it back to you. The penalty for naked shorting is really not significant enough to stop it. Citadel and Goldman and all of the players get fined constantly for uh, doing this as long as it's not intentional and never is intentional, uh, they get fined. And I think one of the things that we need to do is discuss increasing the fines for this lapse of memory and inefficiency in the system to the point where people wake up and pay attention. Right now, the, you know, the fines are insignificant. So I have more to say on that, but yeah. that's just a taste of where I'm going. Well, it, it's, it's got to be technology. I mean, we were very paper intensive. In uh, my early days, you had trade date plus five to settle, and it was paper. And when we had the crash in 87, it, it, it took two weeks to settle trades that happened on, on the day, the Friday and the Monday after the crash. So that's, that's the main thing. I think technology is the answer to any question like what, what's the difference between now and, and before. But right, right. So, so everything has, has greatly increased in speed. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think uh, getting back to my points and, and, and the retail now is, is, a, is a big player uh, on the street and GameStop uh, shows how important it is to address you know that that sector well charles is that because trades are free now i mean back in 87 it would have cost 50 bucks to call your broker and trade right is that why do you think that's incorrect? well the trading was more expensive the bid offer spreads were wider and most of the uh velocity trading was done by institutions that that had a moral compass um <laughs> The, uh, not, not that the re I, as a matter of fact, I, I'm in favor of what, of what the Reddit boys did and girls. Um, <laughs> they were right in what they did, so I'm not knocking them. And this is coming from a hedge fund manager, so that's... But, uh, but an institution would never push the system that far because the regulators would come down on them and saying... In other words, the question you have to ask yourself, well, why didn't a hedge fund do what Keith Gill did and his followers? Because... A hedge fund would do that to a certain point and then cut it because the SEC would be in on them. I, I see. So when they, when, the, when the retail players rallied together, there was no, I guess there wasn't a, a single target, or is that why the, I mean, why wouldn't they be, uh, why wouldn't they go after them? Well, you know, if Goldman Sachs tried to execute a short squeeze, they have executive management that at some point would have said, we've made enough money, now cut it out because the SEC will be on our backs and we don't need those two bit no good. <laughs> you know, so so that that's important. Whereas the retail guys just said, hey, if 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 Plotkin can short, you know, over a hundred percent or Plotkin and his and his cohorts could short over hundred percent of the float, why can't we buy enough calls equal to a hundred percent? of the outstanding or the float. So uh, it, it was an even up playing field, just that the moral compass is different. The hedge funds got a little bit of a moral, more moral compass, not that much more, but a little bit more. Well, and Charles, I think you told me that it didn't. It, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize there's a risk of a squeeze when you have over 100% of the yeah. Of the, uh, the, the you know, I was surprised short. when they had the congressional hearing that they didn't, that they, they tried to set the retail side up for a fall, but it's really that, you know, the, the hedge fund world. I mean, they, uh, poor risk management. You know, once you see... Uh, the exchanges reporting that 100% of the float is being shorted and you know there's synthetic shorts to carry it up to 140% or thereabouts. It only takes a 10% move in the stock to start some shorters to think about covering the short. Most hedge fund managers will, will start covering their losses if they're long and the stock goes down 10%, at 10% is sort of the, the demarcation, and if they're short and it goes up 10%, they start covering. There's a simple mathematics. If the stock goes from 100 to 90, you only need 10%, 10.5% to get back to break even. So you start cutting your losses at that point. At 20%, you either double down or, or cut the position out altogether. 
Uh, now, Charles, I want to ask you about something I think we've discussed in the past. We're, we're, big, we're, we're obviously very, very big fans of NASDAQ here, but I was talking to a nice uh, market maker, and he said he felt sick to his stomach that day when you could only put in sell orders for that list of stocks. How did that come about? Well, like I was alluding to before, the market makers um, were basically selling to uh, uh, Robinhood and, and the Reddit crowd uh, naked calls long and they were short the call because it's, it's double entry accounting somebody's long and somebody's short and the market makers did not hedge in the beginning but then when they started hedging because the volume of calls went to the point where it became dangerous the hedge to a short call is to either buy another call or buy the stock and it's much easier to go in and, and, and buy the stock electronically than to start. So they bought the stock. And in buying the stock, they were moving this, the price up. And their attitude was this call buying will stop. So let's buy the stock, hedge our current position, and hope that the buyers of these calls stop. But they didn't. They just kept going and going and going. So the buying of the long stock on the short call became the issue. And so it got to the point where the exchanges and regulators were aware that market makers were becoming illiquid. They had to settle these trades and they need capital to do that. And they were spending their capital, which is on the, uh, to, to, to cover the, 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 the short call. And then that's what blew it. And then they had to tell, stop buying the stock. No more buying the stock unless you're Plotkin or hedge funds where you're short right, you're and you covering. want to reduce your risk. But no more buying for speculation. You can buy to cover a short. 